Hello all and welcome to Rose City, the after show, the podcast where we dive into the world of the popular novel Rose City by author Karina Q. In each episode, we will be discussing a different aspect of the book from the complex characters to the intricate plot twist and everything in between. Make sure to check out Rose City on Kindle Bella to stay up to date as we explore unique perspectives and insights on the story. Ladies and gentlemen, today's question is what are you doing for self-help and self-fulfillment? What are you doing to make sure that you're good? Who wants to start that off? I'll go. Um, I'm still um, working on my mental health. I am staying on meds and I have not missed any counseling sessions and um, taking time. I mean, nothing huge, just sitting in my room and, you know, watching a movie and learning to breathe and calm down. That's that's my self-care. Well, that's awesome. And she also goes and gets her nails done. So, and you like to treat yourself to lunch and stuff. So that's also self-care as well. Oh yeah, girl, my Thai rice. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You know? mm-hmm. And those Vietnamese sandwiches. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Girl. You're like, I need some more for lunch. Me I too. know. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I do for self-care is I'm trying to, take more time for myself um, when I need it uh, away from my children and my husband and just having those moments alone, whether, you know, I go outside and walk um, or go in my room and close the door and tell everybody I just need, I just need some time. Leave me alone. (laughs) Um, I'm also telling people how I feel in real time, you know, not holding things in. Um, if I need to have harder conversations, you know, making that known, you know, and not just letting sitting with it and trying to figure it out myself so I don't bother anybody, you know. Um, and I'm also I've also gotten better at um, calling uh, Karina and venting when I need to. And, you know, like she's the only person I really feel comfortable saying my choice words, like my curse words and stuff, to. So <laughs> I'll call her and get it out because I know she won't judge me. <laughs> um, and also I bought a face, a face steamer. Um, so when I do like, I try to do a bubble bath, not a bubble bath, but like an Epsom salt soak once a week. Um, and then I bought a face steamer where it's like a 10 minute steam on your face. And I'll nice. go in the bathroom and do a face massage and take deep breaths and yeah. you know just a moment when I need to um, because I don't want to get wrinkles so that's like my biggest <laughs> thing so sometimes if I haven't done it enough then I'm like oh these people are aging me over here so I'll go in there and steam my face and um, do some face, face care so that's what I do for self um, self care um, another thing that I do that I don't know I don't even know if you know this Karina but I like to do free dancing. Um, and so sometimes when I feel really stiff or just stagnant, you know, I'll get up and I'll just put on some music. It's usually like some instrumental beats or some tribal beats or whatever. And I'll just turn it up and then free dance. You just move with the music, however it feels. And, you know, you just, you know, just, just go until things just start flowing in your body and you just start feeling it you know, and I'll do that for like 30 minutes to an hour. And when I'm done, I just feel so free. I feel so cool. And, you know, (laughs) Um, so yeah, those are a few things that I like to do. Well, I love that. Um, For self-help, I do a lot of things. I call my girls um, and Alicia and Kyrie, they get the works like they get it all like they be like, wow, Karina just has the range of emotions. Like, you know, so but I'm free with them. It's not, you know, somebody questioning me or what are you talking about? No, like I have their full support. I have their sympathy. I have their love and I have their empowerment. So I called them. Also, years ago, Kyrie was always like, you should do like these uh, affirmations and stuff. And I was like, oh, yeah, you know. And like, I create like a Pinterest board of all my affirmations, which I love, but then I have to remember to log on to Pinterest and then sit down and read it. So recently um, she had started sending me even like um, affirmations on YouTube to like listen to and stuff. And so I've been doing that. And my mom was always like really big into like affirmations and speaking over yourself and, you know, it's, it's biblical, but um, 
Yeah, I, I've started doing that and I feel a lot better. I was telling, you know, my ladies before we started recording that a lot of times like you you there's like negative thoughts that come into your head constantly. And if you're not careful, you start to come into agreement with negative things being spoken over you, right? And so you really need to combat that when you hear, oh, I'm not worthy enough, or I'm not good enough, or I'm not smart enough. Like, where is this coming from? Because that's all a whole lot, like a bag of lies. So you need to have time where you're you're saying positive things over yourself. No, I am smart. No, I am capable. I have high capacity. I can do this. All this, I can't, I can't. I don't even like to let those kinds of words come out my mouth anymore because words do have power. And if I'm constantly talking about what I can't do, I'm literally diminishing my own power, my own abilities. So I need to be like, I, I can do it. I am, I, you know, I am enlarging, you know, my territory. I am increasing my stakes. Like I'm doing what I need to do, increasing in capacity so I can handle all the things that are coming at me. I got this mentally and emotionally, physically, spiritually, baby, I got this. And so also I work out, which is um, not just for the physical aspect of like wanting to look good, but <clears throat> I work out because it's like, it's just good for my mind, my body and my soul, you know? And I know that it's doing something good for my body when I go to the doctor and they're like, all your lab work and everything's looking really good and you're healthy. And I'm like, yeah, cause that's what we aim to do. We want to stay healthy inside as well as outside. And then I kind of just zone out. Like I put my music on and I just be out there for an hour and a half, two hours and I work out and I just enjoy myself. So my self care also looks like finding a good TV show or movie and just being by myself. Like, I might be married. I might have kids. I don't want to be around them all the time. I don't care. I said what I said. Um, and like my husband, he loves his Fortnite. He could be on Fortnite sometimes for eight hours straight with him and his online friends. And I'm not even mad at you, bro. Like, take your right. time. Do you. Because baby, while you down here in this living room obsessed over Fortnite and yelling and cussing people out, I'm going to be upstairs in my bed and I'm going to either be working on Rose City stuff or I'm going to be watching a TV show. I'm going to be talking to my girl. So I do, I definitely value like my own private time. So, you know, and I try to get some time in there with the kids when I can, because it's like, you have to schedule things with these people now. It's not like before. It was like, you want to watch a movie? And he's like, yeah, no. Nope. Now it's like, actually, mom, I just started a game or I'm talking to my cousin Kyrie. And I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. So you don't got time for me. You know what I mean? So self-care looks like a lot of different things. You know, reading a book that you haven't read in a long time. I'm finishing up Crazy Rich Asians and that joint mm -hmm. has been wild like mm -hmm. i'm so disappointed in the movie because i thought the movie was really good and it is but baby that book like that book had me going i was like mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. i was on my mythology book and so i've been finishing up on my greek mythology book that's always something i've been into so very much so even when we were kids, I don't know how you even got into anything greek mythology because they're I don't that everything was the devil it just came to me. I don't even know how because my mom, you know, everything was the devil and, you know, devil. Jesus Christ is blah, blah, blah. And when I started reading it, you know, my mom was really mad because she's oh, like, yeah. oh, Goose is trying to copy God and Hades is the devil. And I'm like, well, then what about Poseidon? You know, like, you know, and she was saying that they were mocking the Bible. She felt that a lot of the Greek mythology stories were mocking the Bible. And I was like, OK, so that was another thing I had to do in secret. <laughs> um, when I went to school, they had like some books in the library, not, you know, cause it was elementary school. So it wasn't like deep, like the book I have now. Oh my God. I love that book. But, um, you know, you know, just fine. I don't know. It always interested me and the look in the stories, the different stories. Right. Um, and they are, some are similar to the Bible, but Yeah. That, sorry, I didn't mean to come in with that. It's just, I, oh. you said you just picked up a book and I was like, right. oh yeah, and I'm reading Rose City too. But, um, you know, for me, I guess I'm old school, just the whole having a hard book and turning the pages and being cuddled up with your blanket, your drink. And oh, so wow. I started reading my mythology book again. I found it um, and I was like, oh, snap. So That's I guess awesome. I, I add that to my self-care too. <laughs> and I think that there's a lot of things that we do that are self-care related, but we don't necessarily think of it. Like you might be like, oh no, that's not self-care. Yeah, it is. Taking care of yourself, going out and buying something for you and not about the kids. Cause me and Alicia will go shopping and she'd be like, well, Nikki, and I'm like, girl, you don't put, we have gotten into grocery stores and at top to bottom, we have like, argued. We have argued in the store. 
put that down. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I got to embarrass her. I really do. I really, because I like, I have to shame her, you know? Well, no, she does. Next time, and I'm like, next time they're not going to have them shoes. Girl, get it now while it's hot and it's lasting, right? So I I, I make it a point to go to the store and I will shame her. I'm like, put it down. You always buy something. Put my stuff back and then get the kids stuff. And she's like, what are you doing? Not with what, me. What, no, no. You get that. <laughs> Get them kid. Yeah, you ain't doing it. You are not allowed. Don't She'll tell me are before always taking care of car into the store. She'll be like, okay, before we get in here. <laughs> don't, you, don't you do that. You ain't, you ain't getting nothing. This is for you. You're shopping. Don't you pick up nothing yes. for them kids. I was like, yes. okay, Ooh, mama. And she, try, and she tries to like sneak off into like the kids section. And I'm like, what I say? You want me to get loud in Burlington? <laughs> I, will, I will turn up. Oh, you think it's okay? <laughs> you know, it's like, because as mothers, it's so, so easy. We huh? went to top to bottom, and I just wanted to get an umbrella because I thought they had cute little umbrellas. And she's like, no, you ain't doing that. Uh-uh. Nope. Put it back. I was like, well, dang. And I did, but. <laughs> because when I it comes to, to motherhood, get oh, no. At the oh, no, because I'm not going to drop it. That's that's probably one of my toxic characteristics. The baby, when I get on something, my Elroy Scott come out. I'm not dropping that. <laughs> we going all the way in. I'm like my father uh, in that regard. I can keep this going. Like, mm -hmm. uh huh. I'm truly my father's daughter, toxic and all in so many terrible ways. Um, but yeah, I'm like, I'm not going to let you get in the car and have any peace. You're not going to have no peace in this car. <laughs> I'm going to roast you when we get in the car. I'm going to roast you back at my house because what happens is she drives down and she visits me and she'll spend like a weekend. She's not going to have no peace to hold you well because you should have got them shoes. You know what? Because see, now I'm going to go buy them tomorrow and I'm going to send you a photo of me wearing them. And when you come back in three to six yep. months, they ain't be there. Oh, I, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I'll be like, what? Is real. And we'll go out somewhere and she's, yeah, you should wear that. You know, them shoes would have been really cute with that. But no, you didn't get <laughs> them shoes. So I'm like, well, damn. I, Let's go back to the to bottom so you can leave me alone. There, yeah, we, we ended up having to go back. Because it was for those pants with the holes in the front that had the pearls. Because you oh, were not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I put them back. back baby. Yeah, Can I took her back me? Sunday morning. <laughs> I said, no, we're going back, baby. When the store opens up on Sunday, you're getting them pants. You deserve them jeans. So that's the thing. So cute. Um, but that was the thing, you know. As mothers, it's so easy to just constantly look at the needs of what your kids and everybody else in your life needs. And then you're like, well, I haven't bought anything for myself in a year. I don't, you know, it's like, yeah, the bills are paid, praise God, but you better take mm -hmm. care of yourself because at the end of the day, these babies are going to get grown and they're going to move on. They're going to have their own lives and their own everything. And what did you do for yourself? What investment did you make? Like, I love my mother and I hope you're not offended when I say this kitty, but my mother, mother, mother's kitty, God, excuse me. Let me not just say her first name. You know how she is about the titles. She will she be like, my mother would be like, and I'm fat because of you guys. And, 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 and I had all these babies, and I'm like, ma'am, <laughs> that was a personal choice. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So she'll, she'll be upset. I, I can't help you there. Yeah, and she'll be upset because she'll say, you know, there were times where I wanted to go to the gym or I wanted to do this, but I couldn't because, you know, your daddy wasn't going to watch five kids. <laughs> like, you know, just couldn't do that. And so taking time for ourselves is inc incredibly important. And I feel like now that my mother's an older woman, Baby, she's taking time for herself. She's telling people off. Like, she's doing a lot. Like, if she wants to go travel, she travels. If she wants to tell somebody off, she don't care. Um, she got all kind of packages showing up to her house. She was sending me pictures. Oh, I got these new shoes and, and I got me some new hair. So she's living her best life in her 70s. Praise God. I know that's right. Yeah. <laughs>
And um, I had started doing what I like to call mirror talk, you know, and I would get in the mirror and I would tell myself stuff that I wanted other people to tell me, you know, <laughs> um, and that really helped, you know, and I would hug myself and tell myself I love me and, you know, all the affirmations that I heard that made me feel good. I made sure I said those to myself. And, you know, that is super, super, super duper important. You know, we're never going to nobody's ever going to fit the bill of what we need to hear every day, but we need to show up for ourselves. You know, if everybody else fails you, don't you dare fail yourself. And that's what I tell myself when I get down and, you know, when I'm missing my friends and I'm I, I still got to show up for me at the end of the day, you know. <laughs> So I just wanted to throw that in there. And that's super powerful. And I'm glad that you circled back to that because like this morning I was getting um, dressed in my daughter. She came in and she heard this lady saying, you know, I am wonderful. I am powerful. I am beautiful. You know, and she's looking at me like, you repeat after this woman? Yes, ma'am. And so when I came downstairs, um, I explained to her that and she was just like, and I, you know, I started to tell her, I said, how many times do you go to school and people say things to you and that sticks to you like glue or like, as I love, I love my tar analogy. Me and Alicia had this obsession as kids about tar. It was an East side thing. It was, tar. It, was it was, it was, yeah. Tar Whatever. all over the place. Cause they, you know, uh, cheat. Oh. They fix the roads by putting tar over. Yeah. Holes. yeah. Yep. They put a lot of tar in different places. Oh. And then when it would get hot, the tar would melt and we would have it on our shoes. It was a mess. It was smelly and sticky. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're not gonna go back to the tar days. Um, but I was it's like, but when tar gets on you, baby, it's nearly impossible to get off of you. And sometimes words feel like that too. Sometimes it feels like when somebody projects certain things onto you that it, it feels like it just sticks on you. Like I can't get this off of me, right? And so I was telling her, I was, I was telling her and my son, I said, you have to learn to love yourself and um, work on your own confidence. Because if you put all that into like, oh, my friends think I'm dope and my friends said I'm pretty and my friend, well, what happens when that friend decides, I don't like Karina anymore and she's tar, you know, like what, what happens? Well, you know what I'm saying? What happens when that, when those groups of friends and things, maybe people move away or maybe they just decide, I don't like you anymore. So I've allowed you to become false self-esteem in my life. I've allowed my friends and people around me to build me up. And those same people can take, instead of building me, they can now tear me down because my confidence is in your opinion. But what about if your confidence and your, and your self-esteem was rooted in your own personal belief that even if nobody else thinks that I'm flawed, even if nobody else thinks I'm dope, I know it for me. See, we didn't have these conversations growing up because I'm telling you, we was all in like survival mode. It was like, parents just made it happen. You know, we had a roof over our head. We had lights on, but past that, it wasn't like these deep talks about like learning to build yourself the same up and learning that what other people said about you really doesn't matter. Like, what do you think about yourself? Like, that's what we need to be focusing on. And so, um, we were talking about that this morning and my son was like, hmm, wow, I never thought about it like that. Like, yeah, you got to learn to love. You got to learn to invest in yourself. And when you love yourself, you don't speak negatively to yourself. You don't call yourself dumb and worthless and trash. Because, for instance, my husband can't tell me he loves me. Like, you dummy, you worthless. I'm, I'm handing him some divorce papers, and I'm talking about quick, fast, and in a hurry. Anybody who knows me knows I'm not putting up with none of that. Like, it ain't going to be no, well, Thomas, I keep explaining to you. I mean the names, right? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, Thomas, I'm not going to be explaining to you over and over. Your words hurt me. Say it again. I double dog dare you. Maybe I'll be gone so fast. Like, I came home and all the furniture was gone and, 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 and the kids was gone. <laughs> yeah, because I'm going. Because you got to protect yourself. You got to love, learn to love you more than you love anybody else. But get around other people who also see like the power and the creativity that you have. And y'all nourish each other, you know, bless each other, water each other's grass. Like it's a whole vibe. But yeah, love yourself. Love you, baby. You deserve that. You deserve that hug. Mm -hmm. You deserve it. And stretch too. Ooh, stretching is amazing. And I know people don't think much about stretching, but stretching, it does wonders for the body. Stretch. Alicia's like, I guess. 
I'm telling you, girl. Stress. I stress or I stretch, and if I stretch the wrong way, I'm having a full spasm, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna be stuck on the floor. True. So True. her back. I'm like, y'all go ahead with that stretching. I'm gonna just okay. praise God. I'll cheer Pretty from the cool. sidelines. I know I ain't True. trying to be stuck there. I'm old. I'm old. I'm old. He's not old. She has a severe back problem, so it's not old. Because I'm old. <laughs> no, because it's genetic. <laughs> See, beating yourself really up. Is. There you go. It is genetics. It's something that runs in your family. So it's not, you know, you're old. Because you're sexy as hell, baby. Like, for real, for real. Like, both of my girls, honey, out here stunting. Every week, baby, I'd be like, oh, yeah, those are my friends, honey. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The ladies look so good. So Ooh, girls good. trip about to be lit. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> it's about to be. It's, it's we about to show out. Ooh, out. Lord. In, in the biggest possible fashion. Like, yeah. Like next, praise God, we doing it. We ain't got no bellies to try to take care of. We good. Like we be going. Yeah. Kyrie's like, no more babies over here, baby. Yeah, we're gonna do it up. Mm.